Hello, everybody. Welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. My name is Wheeler, and joining t- us today, I have a chair. Hello. A Serge. This is weird. And an Alex. Uh, the snow from the intro arrived in the city. Things are getting weird in Victoria. And just a quick reminder, this is brought to you in part by you, the Patreon. Patreon.com slash loading ready run. If we didn't have you, we wouldn't have this. Uh, and a little bit of business before we hop into things. We just want to remind you that we have the Canadian Highlander 2019 year-end world championship. We need to workshop that name. The top eight, what do we call this? <laughs> the, the World final? Series of Can World, world. Series. Of, yes. I don't think we can call it a World Series. We might hit, well, get hit by Well, just as much as the MLB can call theirs a World Series, we can call ours <laughs> All right. Either series. way, it's going to be over at twitch.tv slash loadingreadyrun on Saturday, February the 1st. Mm-hmm. Ooh. There'll be some uh, good magic powerful involved. Magic. Powerful magic. Now, last year we had commentary, which was Three of us, and then uh, Ben Ulmer joined us because Wheeler qualified. Now, it's going to be slightly more complicated this year because Wheeler qualified again. Yeah, sorry. And Jer oopsed into the last spot, what, was it yesterday or something like that? Yeah, something like that. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find out how we're gonna get our coverage when we have. Two. I'm not in it. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, but we're gonna do commentary, and it's gonna be awesome, Alex. We're gonna watch these suckers goof. How many how many Wheel of Fortunes? Till you die this time. You will be shocked. And actually, no, I might just punk out and play the same thing I always play. <laughs> um, what, anyways, flying men. Yes. Uh, let's get to our first segment. That is uh, the best card you're not playing. And up to bat is uh, your boy, me. Now I pivoted in what I wanted to pick, mm. and this is a card that feels a bit odd to include as in as many decks as I've been including it in. Uh huh. Pulse of Marasa. Oh. Uh, Pulse of Marasa is an instant. It costs two and a green uh, that says return target creature or land from your graveyard. Uh, P U L S E O F and then Marasa. Um, it returns a creature or land from your graveyard just hold to your hand. One sec, so and you can get the card okay. reader to work here. We can continue talking about this card while James tries to figure things out or kills us. Well, the good thing about Pulse and Marasa is that the last text is you gain six life, yeah. so you won't die. I like this card. Yeah, it's a, a it's a it's a good one. It's it's one that has there's a bit of an issue, uh, not just with putting the card art on the screen, but also with blue black decks and certain other blue X combinations. Dying to Goblin Guide. Mm-hmm. Goblin Guide's a very good card. <laughs> Uh, it's one of the number one things that gets brought up when people say, hey, can I play this Sure, it's like, can you control? live through red, right? Right. Uh, the answer is usually no, but thankfully we've received a couple of cards <clears throat> in the past, well, I guess now six years uh, that help us deal with it. Um, cards like Thrag Tusk. That's a Gatewatch card, isn't it? Cards like, well, yes. Oak Thrag Tusk is an older yeah. one. Uh, Oko is a newer one. <laughs> and Pulse, <laughs> Pulse is kind of in the middle, but I think the can package call of Oko these... a life gain card, like, <laughs> Technically, like, yeah. it's a it's a that's weird. That's like calling tendrils of agony a life game card. <laughs> like, hey, never, that, mm, not irrelevant. Let's let's never doubt the short drills. So, I mean, I've done it. Yeah. But let's go back to pulse for really the. It is a here. thing that that card does. So you're you're playing a limited instant speed regrowth, and the plus behind it is the fact that it gains life. Like, it, well, it doesn't just gain life; it gains six life, and it re lot. and it rebuys uh, anything from. Any of your lands getting blown up, which one is one of the ways that you can also just lose control mirrors, is if you fall behind on lands. Sure. Uh, there it okay, is. There it is. Uh, it rebuys cards like Snapcaster Mage, one which of the, is pretty important. One of the spiciest lines with this is to cast Snapcaster Mage before blockers, target Pulse of Marasa. If you can afford to do it, you block without casting Pulse of Marasa, <coughs> trade with your Snapcaster Mage, and then Pulse of Marasa your Snapcaster Mage back. Mm-hmm. That's and that, hot. And rebuying late game too, rebuying anything from again Snapcaster Mages to Vendelian Cliques or Torrential Gear Hulks. What are you playing this in? Uh, bug control is my favorite application of this. I hmm. think you could justify it maybe in a rug control as well. Certain landsy mid range decks can get away with it too. Yeah, I've considered playing this in like green black lens shell the rock. 
Yeah. Like in a meta where it's just like, I'm going to get incinerated. It's it's truly the green timely reinforcements. Are you... Th that's wow, exactly that's what it really is. cool. Are you cutting Eternal Witness for this? What? That depends entirely on which build you yeah. play and how, how dense your green is because the single green pip is very important, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to... Uh, mess up a, your mana in a deck full of murderous riders and counter spells, <laughs> and and also how how much you want to be operating at instant speed. Like a lot of the blue based control decks really don't want to be tapping out for Eternal Witness very yeah. often, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and so the ability to do this inside of combat where you're already sure there's nothing you need to remove, nothing you need to counter. I'm just wondering if this is regrowth number three in your deck, or if you don't play regrowth or eternal witness, this can slide into a deck because it plays such an interesting role. This is often seen in decks without either regrowth or eternal. Yeah. Or eternal you, witness. you play this because you don't want to dedicate to something as boring as regrowth hmm. or as uh, conditional as the casting cost on witness. Yeah, like the decks that are casting this are casting it as much for the you gain six as for the return a creature or land. Mm hmm. Anyways, uh, on to the uh, th reason why we're all here. It's the Theros Beyond Death Canadian Highlander set review. Now, let's be clear. This is for Canadian Highlander. So there may be cards in here that are absolutely bonkers in other formats, but we are looking at it through the lens of Canadian Highlander. It's also not necessarily exhaustive. There are plenty of role-playing cards that we might not be touching on for the sake of time. Uh, we probably think they're good, too, you know? Three power, two drop, not bad, but also not worth talking about. Uh, we are going to be going... Can we cover why you're hosting? Certainly. Yeah, so, that took me unawares. Uh, this is Theros. There's a lot of cards in the set that feature uh, a couple of keywords. Land, which as the premier lands pilot, I can sit here and talk about that all day, but that's just not fair. And then there's Enchantment. And as the premier enchantress pilot, I could sit here and talk about that all day. But... Serge, you, you tend to act as a moderator for, well, literally every other episode, and I think it's uh, a great time to give you uh, a chance to spread your wings on a couple of these pet archetypes that you've picked up recently. You're so generous. And speaking of, uh, I, I'll give you one last roast and then I'll keep it clean. Uh, also, I didn't want to put the listeners through uh, various mispronunciations of all these uh, very complex names. I'm, I'm waiting for you to nail every single... <laughs> thank you, Alex. I am going every to name. butcher the first one. <laughs> Poor uh, headphone users. We're looking to go... White oh, blue. ass lead. Yes. Uh, let's ass lead into the set review as we try to do white, blue, and black. But hey, if we're pinched for time, then we can always restructure. Uh, the first card we have is ass lead... <laughs> <laughs> of Life's Bounty. I'll see it. I'll see it of Life's Bounty. It's uh, one white for a 1-1 one, one enchantment creature nymph with life link. Mm. Has pay one, sacrifice ass lead of Life's Bounty. Target creature or enchantment <clears throat> you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Alex. He once described a uh, benevolent bodyguard as a mother of runes that you won't get bad looks from attacking with. <laughs> Yep. And this, I think, has something in common with that. So it's a vaguely similar card in that it's like a 1-1 one, one that has a protect another creature ability. Um, although there's... An, there's it, it's weird because it goes up and down where it's just like, it can protect another creature by sacrificing itself, but it has to pay a mana cost. But you can protect your enchantments instead. <laughs> but it doesn't have the human subtype. But it has lifelink. In, in a world where we now have Giver of Runes, uh, God bless her soul. Right. Uh, do we need the um, benevolent bodyguards of the world? Probably not, but it's like it's an interesting effect, and there's like a lot of stuff going on in the card. I don't know. Serge, would you play this in Enchantress? No. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> well, Archon, uh, next card Archon <laughs> of Sun's Grace. Two white, white for a 3 4. Archon creature with flying and lifelink. Pegasus creatures you <laughs> control have lifelink. And it has Constellation. Constellation <clears throat> is a returning mechanic that says whenever an enchantment ETBs enters the battlefield, you have a certain effect. This effect is creating a 2 2 white Pegasus token Taka. with flying. Oh, and it has lifelink, kind of, mm -hmm. maybe. Surge. 
So the constellation word is why we threw this to me. Are you going to play this as a win con for Enchantress? You know, you slam this down, you make a bunch of like little cantropy plays, you get an army of two twos, you cacaw them to death and they all have life flank, that's cute. I don't think this replaces Sigil of the Empty Throne as as a similar sort of effect of like something big you slam down. Really? At, and my reason for saying that is Archon of Sun's Grace doesn't live through your own wrath. Uh, and one of the advantages to playing Enchantress is how few creatures you play, how much you blank your opponent's removal, and how you can often safely wrath your own board and then rebuild from it. And yeah, if your win con doesn't survive through your own strategy of, of how you're going to win on that turn, then it doesn't quite work. Hmm. I think this is a cool card. I think it's powerful, um, but it, it feels mismatched in, in how it wants to position itself in a deck. Now there's been a bit of a community deck favorite, a new archetype of the past <clears throat> year that has been called Sanctum Stompy, Sorry, which what? is uh, looking to play more aggressive enchantment based cards. Um, have you considered approaching that deck yourself? And if you did, do you think this throw would this in? throw it in? I mean, all of a sudden, Archon of the Sun's Grace seems pretty spicy with a Rancor attached to it. Mm. I think maybe in that particular deck, because you'd be looking at this card in the place of something like, oh, heck, help me out. Uh, same mana cost, also a 3-4. When it attacks, create 1-1s, one and it has Hero Battalion. Hero of Bladehold? I would look at this and Hero of Bladehold as sort of the same sort of slot. So if you're a green-white aggressive deck with an artifact sub-theme, or okay. enchantment sub-theme, what are you playing? Hero of Bladehold, which just kills your opponent, or Archon of Sun's Grace, which is slightly slower, but potentially has more synergy. Compare this to Hero of Bladehold is a great way for me to immediately dislike a card. <laughs> because it's the, the whatever card's getting compared, it's probably not gonna be good enough. Yeah, and that's and we're playing an eternal format, mm -hmm. right? If you're looking at the top end finisher on your aggro deck, does this do enough? Speaking of does this do enough and comparing it to cards that were legal in the Zendikar Scars Block standard environment, we have the Birth of Melitus. Uh, this is the first Saga, again, Sagas are back, um, that we have on the list. It's a one and a white for an enchantment that's a Saga. Uh, sagas, as they enter, uh, and after your draw step, you add a lore counter to it, and then they have a variety of abilities based on the amount of counters. The first chapter, so to say, uh, is search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, shuffle your library. The second chapter is you create a 0-4 colorless wall artifact creature token with Defender. And the final chapter is you gain two life. Jer. Uh, wall of Omens, this is not. <laughs> uh, if it said any planes, We'd, yeah, we'd, I was. We'd maybe be talking because then you could get the cycling <clears throat> land in a pinch. It sort of does like a tithe impression. Oh yeah, fixes your mana. Like this gets a snow cover planes, but that's maybe but not even that exciting. Basic planes is just like it yeah. is one of the worst cards in the game. Yeah. Basic planes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. If it was any basic land, oh, okay. maybe as well. If it was mm. put but it that's into not play, that white does. If it ramped you, oh, yeah. If maybe it was white ramp then. This would be a oh, slam yeah, dunk all-star every day of the week. But White like, has this really weird yeah. ability where it's like, I will find exactly a planes. No other type of land. It, it's always a planes. There's like five or six cards that do that. We just, I, I can see myself maybe trying this in Enchantress <clears throat> just because there is a, a gulf of powerful enchantments at two, and if you're trying to fill out your curve and cantrips early on, like there's only so many playable one drops before you start killing I mean, your own board. This keeps you from dying for two. That's sort of that's sort of the thing. I think <clears throat> maybe if you're a very passive enchantress deck that's trying to build up its board and then create a bunch of mana and kill them with something like Hangerback Walker, maybe this works. The downside, of course, is that this enchantment leaves play. So your Sarah Sanctum only gets a little bit of value before it goes away, so it you're not It just makes your replenish better. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anyways, let's replenish our stock on good cards. <laughs> by moving over to uh, Idolin of Obstruction. Um, this is, we, or we sorry, skip, oh, we skipped, skipped Daxos. How could I forget Daxos? <laughs> Daxos, blessed by the sun. Sorry, it's my first time doing this. Uh, it's white, white for two and a star. It's a legendary enchantment creature demigod. Daxos's toughness is equal to your devotion to white, and whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, you gain one life. Alex. It's a soul sister, a soul brother. Um, I think this works fine in the soul 
XYZ deck. Um, it's cheap. It has the effect um, on enters and dies, so it's going to be triggering a lot. And that booty is so thick. It's a big booty. It's going to be a thick booty. So, yeah, it seems fine. Um, I don't know that you would play this in any other deck. Like, would you guys play this in? I mean... It has some amount of combo potential as well. Yeah. Yeah. You can do shenanigans with, like, Pattern Rector decks or, well, Allurin-ish decks, but you probably have better tools in both those. But it's it's worth mentioning because it is an enchantment. Yeah, you, there there is that advantage. Where it's, like, weird because that's kind of an advantage and also a downside. It's, like, a legendary and an enchantment. In a world where Enlightened Tutor is zero <clears throat> points. Ah, okay. It it has some flexibility. Yep, this is this is one eyebrow half raised. Mm. If I ever enlightened tutor for this, I am surely lost. <laughs> 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 we might have to scoot a little bit faster. All right, yeah. uh, Idolan of Obstruction. Uh, this one is a one and a white for a two one enchantment creature. It's a spirit with first strike loyalty abilities of planeswalkers. Your opponent's control cost one more to activate. Surge. This card's fantastic. I think this goes into Death and Tax style decks. It's it's an interesting version of Thalia, almost the same printing, first strike, body, and a tax effect, and uh, maybe even goes into that green-white enchantment bestow deck we've been talking about. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Se- seems like a snap include for any D&T deck. Uh, then we have Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis. Two white-white for five loyalty. Uh, Elspeth, Planeswalker, minus one. Up to two target creatures you control each get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Minus two, you create two one one human soldier tokens. And minus three, you gain five life. And then at the end, we have escape. So this is a new mechanic for the set where you pay the escape cost, which is an amount of mana, as well as exiling some number of cards from your graveyard. Uh, This one is four white white, and you exile four other cards. And then you get to cast it from the graveyard. this one got passed off to me because that I, I was shocked. I thought Jer would have some interest in this. Um, I think for the Ancient Tomb decks, it's pretty good. <laughs> like, being able to get this out, um, you create the board, then you swing in, and then you curve up to, if you hit six, you get it back. That renewability is pretty powerful, attached to a Planeswalker. Um, it's probably not the best in a control shell for sure. But I could definitely see it in Mana Dork decks, too. I was I was genuinely surprised that there wasn't a lot of interest in So, those. like, is your ideal play cast this, humans, humans, pump, and then cast it later? Yes. That's pretty pretty decent. It I just makes a board, and then the, I mean, getting a free Planeswalker, free, if mm-hmm. you're out of gas, woof. It's a greasy stick. Big white staple, for sure. All right. Um... <laughs> Onto a and card. You wondered why I didn't <laughs> yeah. like it. All right. Well, let's move to a card that I think is unanimously pretty good. Uh, Heliod Sun Crown. Beep beep. Uh, two and a white for a legendary enchantment creature. God. Gods are back. Uh, it's a five five indestructible that has as long as your devotion to white is less than five. Uh, Heliod isn't a creature. Whenever you gain life, you put a one one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. Uh, and one in a white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. Alex. hoo So this is another one of those... Uh, I mean, they all kind of synergized with themselves a little bit. Or maybe it was just a couple of them. Like, I'm thinking of uh, uh, Ronus, who hmm. kind of set himself off. Yeah, Any- anyway, yeah you th- make things this bigger. One, and- um, I immediately look at, like, combo potential for the, like, gain life plus one plus one counter because this is the, the same ability that... Um, spike Feeder. Archangel of Thune. Archangel oh, of Thune. Sorry, yeah. So it goes <laughs> infinite with Spike Feeder. Mm-hmm. And uh, Walking Ballista. Walking goes Ballista. infinite with Walking Ballista, two-card oh, okay. combo. Give Walking Ballista lifelink. Shoot your opponent. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I see! And Triskelion. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> um, and, like, it's a big donkey. So it's it, had, it has fair application for the like Soul Sister styles decks, as well as a variety of ways to combo with it. You can also just stack itself because it's target enchantment, and if it's not a creature, you can just heap counters on it until you make it a creature. Until it's ready to feed. Yeah, ready Break. to ready to like drop the elbow. Oh. Uh, speaking about dropping bows, <clears throat> uh, Terranika, a Crowan veteran. 
One white white for a legendary creature, human soldier, it's a 3-3, with vigilance. And whenever Terranika attacks, untap another target creature you control. Until end of turn, that creature has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and gains indestructible. Alex. Whamma lamma. Um, so I had to check to make sure that this card worked the way I wanted it to. It does. Um, you want to be targeting another attacking creature, so you crack in for maybe seven or more, and you give sort of retroactive vigilance to another creature. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a lot of power for three mana. It doesn't rewrite other keyword abilities. So say your creature is a 1-1 with double strike. Or, mm. you know, counters. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Or anything like that. Equipment. Yeah, it's... Um, you are thinking much bigger. Yeah. You thought blocking thought. swords was difficult before? <laughs> Try <laughs> blocking it when it's a 6 I saw this and was like, oh, cool. You can cast mm-hmm. something off a of mana dork and then untap it and cast another thing. Maybe. <laughs> That is, but, that's uh, also cool. But yeah, I mean, sure. Like making it ramps. A, yeah, it ramps. Make it, making a 4-4 four, four double striker that's indestructible, that's good too. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, this is just like so much power crammed into a tiny mana cost. This goes in every aggressive white X deck. Yeah. Dying to Bolt and Caracas, though. I... <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I gets the seal of approval. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Transcendent Envoy is our last white card. Uh, this is a beautiful griffin. Uh, it's a one in a white for a one two enchantment creature, griffin, that has flying and says aura spells you cast cost one less to cast. Kaka. Surge. I think this goes exactly in that bestow deck that we were talking about. I don't mm-hmm. think this has much of a home otherwise. If you're an aggressive white-based aggro deck, you're typically not playing enough auras to actually get value off of this. Mm. I mean, Rancor doesn't even have colorless in it. And well, you also explained earlier that for the exact same reason, um, this doesn't live through your wraths in the. Uh, well, you don't play enough. You don't play enough auras in Enchantress, right? To make auras this kind specifically of, being yeah. ones that go on stuff. Yeah, and there are some enchant permanents that would count, but I, I think this only has a home in that deck and that's it. Can you go infinite with words of wind and like fertile ground and like an idol like an idol on of the blossoms? Maybe this is too much. Okay. <laughs> it's time to stop. Maybe? Great. No? Yeah, good that's probably the right answer. All right. Hey. Uh, on to blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of large enchantment related things, oh, blue, blue, blue. uh brine giant uh, six in a blue for a five six giant. Uh, this spell costs one less to cast for each enchantment you control. Surge. So I think even in a world where you can have a one mana five six, I don't know a deck that both wants to run out a ton of enchantments and also play five six five six creatures. Sanctum Stompy. Sanctum Stompy. Sanctum Does Sanctum Stompy, Stompy even play blue? Why not? Could, I mean, now it probably should. You Maybe. got Curious Obsession. There's a gold card that is absurd. A second <laughs> Like, surely there's a Bant build of this well, list. Look, maybe, maybe you try and do a Boggles style thing where you're running a bunch Ooh, of auras this, out into there. But this, yeah. Go ahead. This doesn't go into Boggles. But, but that's the only word I'm thinking about where you have, you care about auras and the other thing. like It doesn't have hexproof. I mean, obviously it doesn't have hexproof, but if you're trying to think about a world, if you're adding blue, the first thing I think about if I want auras and blue cards is brain, uh, Geist of St. Traft. Mm. Like that's yeah. that's a sort of idea. And you're probably not playing a lot of the 1-1 one, one boggles, but I don't know. I can see this card being something I start brewing around and then eventually just cutting. That's what I'm looking to get. I want to get that brain going on this. Yeah, well, because you're, you're, you're playing... I think the creatures you want to play are going to be a lot more interesting. And then eventually you're like, oh, I have to make a cut. And I have like 102 cards. Like, well, sorry, Brian Giant. You're cute. Brian Giant? Yeah. Uh, My name's Brian. All right. Calafe. <laughs> I'm willing to be. I'm willing to accept I'm wrong on this. No, Maybe I'm, this card is absolutely nuts in that particular archetype. And, and it... This opens the door to that being more powerful or more playable, but I, I, this is not the way my brain works. I don't see this card, and I suddenly go like, "Ooh, value." Mm, you also want to set. We should hurry up. Uh, Calife, beloved of the sea, one blue, blue, uh, legendary enchantment creature, demigod for star three. Calife's power is equal to your devotion to blue creatures and enchantments you control. Have spells your opponents cast that target this permanent cost one more to cast. This one's going to me. I love me some mono blue devotion. I love a master of ways, a frostburn weird, perchance a shore crasher elemental. 
Deck's already bloated on threes, but that's never stopped us before. How do you feel about Calphite Snapper? Oh, I love it. It oh, it's a one four with Shroud. Uh, okay, Wizards. <laughs> um, uh, Power creep is it a real. Four one. Well, it becomes a four one when you go topsy turvy with it. Exactly. It smashes. It attack and protects. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this card gets into exactly one deck, and it's probably pretty good in that deck. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of a card that goes into multiple decks, though, uh, Nadir Kraken. One blue blue for a 2-3 Kraken. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Nadir Kraken and create a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle creature token. Whew. Jer. Yeah, this card's pretty good. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since we got... Since we hearken back to Mana George when the last <laughs> great, great uh, Miracle Girl cre creature was printed. This one... I hope gets into the same tier. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you have to pay mana, not ideal, but the fact that you get to go both wide and tall is is quite a large, large game. This doesn't start as a 1-1, one, one, which I think is mm. probably one of the biggest upsides from the Miracle Grow creatures is you actually get a 2-3 three for 3 instead of a 1-1 one, one for mean, 3. Also, because it's a triggers on draw card, you will get opportunity every turn. Right? Yeah, on your well, uh, on your draw as, step. as opposed like, to like yeah. um, grow creatures that rely on casting spells. Yeah, and I mean even stuff like tapping a Jace Friend's Prodigy, you can get as ambitious as Jace the Mind Sculptor. It's not bad. Sylvan Library. Usually, yeah, the usually classic. you have to pick tall or wide, <laughs> and this just gives you both. Well, and that's 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 why Mana George is so good because it has trample. Mm. So like the oh, fact that God. it goes tall, you can't get chump blocked. But the fact that this goes big and and wide. Yeah, like upkeep, trigger my um, library, pay three <laughs> is kind of disgusting. Yeah, that's a little gross. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we're going to a new segment. It's called Speed Review. We have Omen of the Sea. Uh, one in a blue, enchantment, flash. When it ETBs, scry two, then draw a card. Two in a blue, sacrifice Omen, scry two. Surge, Maybe yes or no? Find an enchantress. Yes and control. Hmm. You like this for control? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, well, we had more to talk about. Then. <laughs> I keep mean, going, keep going. Fast that's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. All right, uh, Sage of Mysteries. Uh, one blue for a zero two. Uh, Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target player mills the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Uh, it's also a human wizard. Surge? Maybe if you're trying to set up Replenish. Would you like it if it was uh, a crap? <laughs> Would. It's basically Enchantress Hedron crap. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's your both your favorite archetype and your favorite card of all time all melded into one. Just let them think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I need you to help me out really quickly <laughs> with one particular card, one mana artifact. I know we said we were the speed round. Um, <laughs> And every time a permanent enters the battlefield, a player mills Alter a card. Alter of the Brood. Yeah. Alter, go with me on a journey here. Oh. Alter of the Brood, Sage of Mysteries, Enchantress. Uh huh. Seems like a stretch. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. All right. Coming <clears throat> soon to your next FMP. But then you self mill. You <laughs> self mill, you replenish, you kill the people them. People will want to see this. Uh, Stern Dismissal it's is the next card. It's unsummoned, but better. It's unsummoned, but better. Uh, well, it can't target your own can't things. can't target your own oh, things, boo. which is tough. It's an unsummoned yeah. but different. I, this is why I never say strictly unless I really am sure I mean it for real. Okay. Strictly better means one thing. I don't I don't think you play this. Well, I mean, would you play unsummon? I, I mean, over I this, yes. And even then, we don't really play unsummon. Eh, in tempo for yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Thassa Deep Dwelling, three and a blue for a six five legendary enchantment god with indestructible. As long as your devotion to blue is less than five, Thassa is not a creature. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. Three and a blue, tap another target creature. Surge? I kind of want to throw this to Jer for the blink deck. Uh, you want to blink with this? Not, not really. There's just better blink cards i think and if you're not playing it in blink i don't know where else it would go oh but blinky all right because it, it yeah again it doesn't it doesn't synergize with the enchantment thing it's too slow for tempo pain four to tap a creature it has a lot of powerful text but it 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 kind of just 
doesn't feel cohesive like it belongs anywhere. Just stay dwelling in the deep. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thassa's intervention, however, uh, could be the same story, but who knows? Uh, maybe this card's good. X blue blue instant. You choose one. Look at the top X cards of your library. Put up to two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom in any order. Or uh, counter target spell unless it's controller pays twice X. Hmm. Um, let's throw this one to Jer. I like this card. Um, yeah, this, this card sort of does a reasonable dig through time slash counter spell, expensive counter spell uh, split card impression. I think it'll be great in control decks. Uh, you're looking for an excuse to play more more draw spells with flexibility in this. Like this, this isn't even role. terrible with X equals one. Nope. Do you totally compare fine. this to something like miscalculation? You no. know, it well, but in, in the mind that it's a counter spell until it's not, and then you can ship it for something better. I'm thinking of it as like a four mana draw two that will sometimes be a counter spell. I was about to say, yeah, it's like you you've gotta feel really stupid if you're only casting <clears throat> this for one. I mean, well, like, like you gotta you, do what you gotta do. The yeah. only time you're casting it for one, I think, is if you absolutely have to, or you're casting it in counter spell mode. It's like sure, miscalculation <clears throat> mode, as Surge says. Like right. you'll you'll cast it as a miscalculation a bunch of the time, but I don't think that's what you're putting it in your deck for. Closing out our Thassa hat trick, we have Thassa's Oracle. Uh, blue, blue for a 1-3 Merfolk Wizard. When Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion to blue. Put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Then, if X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. You win the game. Uh, Jer? Uh, this is the, now the best thing to to do if you're doomsdaying or hermit druiding or attempting to win with no cards in your library. Uh, beats a removal spell every time. Yeah. It, it wins It wins faster than Laboratory Maniac if people aren't aware of that. So Laboratory Maniac goes into play and then you have to draw a card from an empty library, whereas this enters the battlefield on an empty library, the trigger wins you the game as it ETBs. Even if they kill it. Yeah. Because the devotion would be zero and your cards are zero. Yeah. Yeah, it's real gross. Yeah. It's also got better art. Uh, Strictly yeah, better. True. Uh, mm. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thernody, Thernody Singer. Oh, what a Thernody, Thernody. Squaw. One and a blue. Welcome for a to one my three. hell wheeler. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, make it stop. Uh, it's a 1 3 flash flying. When Thernody Singer enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus zero until end of turn, where X is your devotion to blue. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you just coughed right down my throat. Um, so Fairy Duelist is a card that has shown up in uh, Flying Men. It's a card that I have kind of allowed the rule of if it costs two, has to attack for two. I've let it bend the rules a bit because it's one of the few things that can actually kill an opponent's creature or stop you from dying. Um, you lose the Fairy Creature type and the guaranteed minus two. But I think the three toughness is actually more relevant uh, than anything. And being able to truly brick a large attack is quite good. Mm. Um, Flying Man's a deck that poops out a lot of 1-1s. One and then I, I could very well see an instance where this is uh, giving a creature minus four or even minus five, uh, which really helps turn the race when you're just attacking <coughs> like with a bunch of 1-1s. This could technically ones. brick two attacks because you flash in block one, Un, like debuff the other mm -hmm. so yeah this changes the race for that deck quite a lot mm -hmm. um thirst for meaning two in a blue instant uh draw three cards then discard two cards unless you discard an enchantment ah. surge and jer can fight over this but honestly i think this one's more in jer's corner um i like this one a lot uh although I actually don't know if it sees play in control. Like, Thirst for Knowledge hasn't even seen that much play recently. They've been printing more and more better draw spells mm -hmm. at four, which is generally where you've been going. I still love Mia Murmurs from Beyond. I'd still play that over this, but... 100% mm. play this in Enchantress. You like 100%. This in I don't even think there's. I don't even think there's a downside to discard, too, because, again, a big part of winning with Enchantress is setting up a really powerful Replenish. Yeah. So you're like, oh, cast Pitch Omniscience, <laughs> GG, I don't know. I mean, that's magical Christmas <laughs> land, but 
pitch omniscience <clears throat> and overwhelming splendor. Yeah, yeah. Cer- certainly choo, is choo, magical. Choo. Yeah, you can choose relevant for this card <clears throat> and thirst for knowledge. You can choose to discard two cards and then discard two enchantments. Technically a modal spell. Yep. Um, Thrix, the sudden storm. Oh, yes. Three blue, oh, blue yes. for a four, Nine. five legendary creature that's an elemental giant. It has flash, it has flying, and says spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater uh, cost one less to cast, and they can't be countered. Yikes. Uh, Jer? <laughs> Did you convince them to print this card for me? <laughs> like, ben, ben always jokes that I play too many dumb, stupid five drops in my blue decks. And now I'm gonna be playing this. More. This one I'm. Uh, this one I'll side with you because I definitely read this and go, oh, they can't counter my Sphinx's rev. Finally, um, you don't even have to leave up protection for your your bombs anymore. Yeah, yeah this is dumb. I mean, and relevant, you can leave up protection for this, in that if you cast this with five mana and a Caracas, you play at the end of turn. They try to kill it. Whoops, back to hand. Why does it have a flash? Because. <laughs> yeah. Because it's lightning. Yeah, when I saw it have flash, I'm like, and it's sudden. (laughs) I almost didn't read the rest. I was just Uh, like, yeah, this card's amazing. Let's let's move back to something that's a little more tame. Uh, Wave Break Hippocamp. Uh, Two (laughs) two and a blue for a 2-2 enchantment creature. Horsefish. Love (laughs) it. Uh, Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. Surge? I don't think it is an enchantress. Uh, if if that's I mean if we're throwing to me for the enchantress thing I when I look at this card I think of something like a young pyromancer deck mm. so a fairly cheap deck you want to be having a lot of spells majority of them are instant speed because of course whenever you cast the first spell during your opponent's turn doesn't work for you so you need to be playing instant to get value out of this this makes ops so good <clears throat> but that being said it is a gray ogre it's a three mana two two it's hard to protect. Uh, two toughness is very tough. It's not even a good blocker. So how much do you value a draw engine in that particular deck and how much are you willing to invest in trying to protect it? Fair. So it's it's tough. It might see a home in that particular style of deck, but even then it, it, it runs the risk of being a liability. All right. Okay. Uh, Whirlwind Denial. Two and a blue for an instant for each spell and ability your opponent controls counter unless its controller pays four. This is going to the Jer, and if you cannot, uh, you're not watching the video, uh, Jer was nodding uh, throughout the entire thing. Is okay. this a big yes or just a small oh, this yes? Is a, this is a large, large yes. Yeah, this card is... Getting, uh, getting <laughs> like, utility stifles is something we've been seeing a bit more of. Tail's End was the last one. Not a fan of that one. This one, huge upgrade. Mm. Oh, and ability. Oh, yeah. 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 You can yeah. cast it on a fetch land. Y- so, you can eat f- Blood Bright Elf, forget about it. Emrakul, the promised end. Good yeah. night. So, so long. See you for, later. Tendrils. It, well, this works for ch- um, triggered and uh, activated, huh? Correct. Yep. So here, th- let's make it as clear as possible. Judge, my opponent is storming out and about to kill me. Tendrils <laughs> on the stack, and there's like 40,000 copies of it. What do? Uh, <laughs> counter sleep. them all. Or, <laughs> what or do you mean can all? Counter, like or you all, can, all? Or, or you can counter the storm triggered ability mm-hmm. while that's on the stack. Or you can let the triggered ability mm-hmm. resolve and then counter all the copies. It really doesn't matter. You, you have your, your choice. You can't get the timing wrong. Uh, unlike with Flusterstorm. All right. Wow. Uh, on to black. Uh, we're going to start things off with a kill spell. We got Agonizing Remorse. Uh, no, it's that- not a kill spell. <laughs> this is the discard spell. One Classic in a black. Kill spell. Uh, sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from and it. And kill it. Or, hey, you kind of <laughs> kill it. Or a card from their graveyard. Oh. Uh, so they reveal their hand, pick a non-land from that or their graveyard. Uh, exile that card. You lose one life. Ooh. Alex. I missed the line about or their graveyard. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking at this as uh, there's a handful of two mana um, hand attack spells that get into like the really discard heavy decks like Pox or I don't know. Eight uh, rack. Eight rack. Um, but being able to nug something in their graveyard uh, gives us a lot of extra utility. So it's just like Thoughtseize or just like. It Rel- gives it endgame play, whereas typically if you draw a hand attack very late in the game, it has fewer targets, but maybe? I don't know. I don't I don't like this. Two mana for hand attack is a lot. Relevant that if you see their hand and you like if you're going for a card in their graveyard, you still get to see their hand. So that's a lot of and information. And exile is 
Yeah, <clears throat> kind of chef's well, and, kiss. And a bunch of the time when you hand attack them, you're like, oh, coast is clear. Like, I don't really care. So if they have a relevant thing in the graveyard, you can take that instead. Mm. I, I actually think this card's decent. Yeah. Mm. Seems uh, all right. Ephemia, the Cacophony. Uh, one in a black for a two on legendary enchantment creature Harpy flying. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2 2 zombie. Alex? I'm going to play this as a 2 1 for two. Great. That has flying. Great. I don't know how I'm going to get zombies, but we'll figure that out later. Sarcomancy? Rancor? There is a version of Enchantress that is similar to the Bestow deck that I've thought about for a while. Uh, somebody helped me out. The old five mana Theros constellation. Doomwake Giant. Doomwake Giant. Get him. That sort of is built around that. So you are aggressive. You are kind of controlly. Um, and I think this would have a home in there. And I have so apparently the next season of Friday Night Paper Fight is just going to be nothing, nothing but Enchantress. Important for Doomwake Giant. So five mana, four, six. Enchantment creature giant. Whenever Doom Egg giant or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, creatures your opponent control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. It's one sided. So, those, I think those cards fit in a very neat deck with each other. All right. Uh, Discordant Piper. Uh, two mana, two, one. Zombie Seder. When it dies, create a zero one goat token. I want one word answers. Jared, does this go in Aristocrats? Sure. Great. Alex, does this go into zombies? Yeah. All right. Well, that's two for two. Not I have bad. one question. Where does the goat come from? He's um, calling it with the pipes. Yeah. Oh, good. He's pulling it out his nose. <laughs> those are just... <laughs> those those are two legs. From? Yeah. Uh, drag to the underworld. Oh, that's the kill spell I wanted. Two black, black, instant. Uh, this spell costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to black. Noted it's only the cull list that gets reduced. Uh, destroyed target creature. Alex. No, no, no. Um, it's, uh, this seems fine. Um, it's, I compare this to, um, what's the one guy is like, oh no, my neck. Uh, go, go, for for the throat. Throat. go for the throat. Victim of night. That's the one. Oh, victim okay. of night. Um, Cause that one kills almost anything, but the almost is relevant more often than you think because uh victim of is black black instant destroy target non-vampire non-werewolf non-zombie creature there's not too many werewolves but there's a few there's not too many vampires but there's a few and there's mm. a decent number of zombies so this has some blank spots whereas drag to the underworld even if you fa pay full price which is unlikely unless your board is completely empty um it's gonna kill anything great uh, eat to extinction. Three and a black. Exile target creature or planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library. You can put that card into your graveyard, and it's an instant. Jer? I like it. Great. Uh, do you like this more than cards like Vraska's Contempt? Uh, I think it's a little depend on your, your deck, the meta. Uh, this I think gaining two life is usually better than surveil one in the more controlly decks. But this is easier to cast, so. Mm -hmm. mm. I hate the art. Why are there so many <laughs> teeth? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Erebos, bleak hearted. Uh, three and a black for an indestructible legendary enchantment creature. God, it's a five six. Uh, has the whole devotion to black less than five. It ain't a creature. Whenever another creature you control dies, you can pay two life. If you do, draw a card. One in a black, sacrifice another creature. Uh, target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn. Alex. I am going to kill myself drawing too many cards with this. You know it's a May. I know. Also, but it's right there. Also goes infinite with a bunch of stuff. Yes, yeah. this also does go infinite. You're very close to being able to create some infinite loops on aristocrats with this. Mm -hmm. If you can gain lot. back enough <clears throat> life off of your blood artist. Or Sandy B. Or Sandy B. Sandy B. Yeah, I mean, like, the opportunity cost, I mean, it's just life points. Um, anything that doesn't cost mana that's going to get you something is pretty hot. And drawing a card is pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Also, just like... You know, being able to turn your creatures into uh, whatever spell does uh, minus two, minus one. Pretty good. Great. Pretty good. Uh, Erebos's Intervention. X and a black for an instant. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. You gain X life. Or exile up to t <laughs> twice X target cards from your graveyard. Uh, Jer. From graveyards. From yep. graveyards? Wow. This card's a, uh, a good... Good, best death win they've ever printed hmm. um, with significant <clears throat> upside. Like, yeah, it, it's 
it seems flexible not enough to be reasonable. Because, like, I mean, it's a kill spell that gets better as the game grinds on. It also, like, buys you back into the game. This could be huge for black control decks, actually. Mm. Yeah, you, actually. You can just gain, like, a huge swath of life, which is sometimes <clears throat> all you need to turn the corner. One of the issues with black control was when your removal spell is against combo or something like that, where you're, like, you're holding onto your damnation oh, and they're on yeah, storm. Oh, yeah, this is really good against that. This suddenly gives you the flexibility to shore up one of the weaknesses in that deck. So good, good call on that one, Jack. Because, I mean, like, even if you cast it for X's one, you get to nug two cards. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. Neat. Uh, Feast of was it Tezaris? Uh, Tezaris. Fruit of Tezaris. Oh, that's Fruit the one. Of uh, black sorcery. Uh, target player loses two life, and then has escape for three and a black. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. Alex. So I put this on before I realized that you can cast escape cards more than once. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's even better. Um, this is. Uh, I think if this was just a black nug your opponent for two, it wouldn't be very good. Right. But it's quite reasonable in the course of a game, I think, to cast this twice. So you nug them for four, maybe six eventually. And that, those are also additional castings of the of the card. So maybe there's a deck with, uh, I don't know, creatures that care about casting spells. Query and dry. Yeah, I like it. It's reach. It's cheap. Um, and it may actually just like kill your opponent in the long game. Mm. Can I pivot us slightly just to talk about escape? Sure. I think it's going to be really powerful in our format. Yep. I am curious though the balance it's going to have because a lot of decks that we have that already fuel their graveyards are often taxing that as well with delve spells. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm super curious <clears throat> with the amount of tools that we have of self mill, even incidental things, um, surveil cards or you know just self mill cards there's a lot of fetch lands in our format mm -hmm. absolutely i'm very 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 curious we to see two, what effect this game is going to have ones. speaking of putting cards in your graveyard mm -hmm. grave breaker lamia four and a black for a four four enchantment <laughs> creature snake lamia lifelink when grave breaker lamia enters the battlefield search your library for a card put it into your graveyard and then shuffle your library spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast Surge. Thank you for throwing this to me. This is probably my favorite card in the set. It's so it's weird. It's very good. This card is so cool. So cool. And it offers a lot of flexibility in what it wants to go into. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I, I might even play this in lands. I, I picked you because it's a big enchantment creature that finds life in the loam. Right. It sounds like <laughs> yeah, paradise. Okay. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden your worm harvest gets pretty interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Like... Ooh, L life link is also very relevant. Yeah, that's I'm, a lot of damage. You could you could synergize this with a um oh my god brain three mana enchantment grave swap recurring nightmare, recurring nightmare. nightmare. good like Ooh, Gravebreaker breaker lamia no, and recurring no. nightmare sacrifice I mean we used to set up loops with that and the demonic tutor. Uh, demon Rune mm -hmm. with rune scar demon so, and this works great in that type of loop and i think honestly the body and the cost is a little bit more realistic than rune scar demon because it only costs five instead of 40 or whatever rune scar demon <laughs> cost <laughs> <laughs> serge one of the most frustrating cards to come out of alara for me has been uh corpse connoisseur because i really wanted him to be good which one is corpse connoisseur corpse connoisseur is four and a black for like i think it's like a three three or something mm -hmm. and it tutors a creature to your bin and it has um, <clears throat> unearth for three and a black. Sure. It's really cool, but it's just like not quite good enough. Very expensive. Now make it a four, four and give it lifelink. <laughs> and make it any card, not just a creature. That's okay. Now we're talking. All right. Woo! So we've decided to skip uh, one of the cards that we had on the list. Grim physician. Oh, if you hit refresh, you'd, you'd see all the changes. Rest in peace. I'm sorry. Which means, no, it's okay. We have hateful idol on. Uh, which is another one draw. Uh, enchantment creature, it's a spirit, one, two, for a black, uh, with lifelink. And whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you controlled that was attached to it. Surge? The only part of this card that's very interesting for a potential inclusion in the deck is the fact that it doesn't have to be a creature you control that dies. So if you play a deck, an aura deck, where the majority of your removal mm. is aura spells, so there's a bunch of ones, um, one man enchantment, enchanted creature gets minus oh. two, minus two. Dead weight. Dead weight. Like okay. if you are dead weighting your opponent's boards, 
board, this becomes an interesting draw engine. Deadweight Storm. Similarly, if you're not using it for removal, if you put it on your own creatures, it does negate some of the downside to having your own enchanted mm -hmm. creatures dying. So it's fine. I think you could reasonably have a slot for this in that uh, probably Abzan style aggressive enchantress deck. Also, the fact that it has lifelink, if you throw a Rancor on this, this becomes a pretty real threat. Beep, like beep. a three, two trample lifelink, that when it dies, you get Rancor back and an additional card. That's a little scary. You're like, I mean, that that seems pretty sweet. All right. Uh, now up to my favorite card of the set, maybe, uh, which is an odd thing to say about this, Meyer Triton. Uh, one in a black for a 2-1 zombie merfolk with death touch. When Meyer Triton enters the battlefield, you put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard and you gain two life. Alex? I love her. Mm. This card's just good, like top to bottom. It's, it's cheap. It's two uh, relevant subtypes, a keyword, and it does two things you want a card to do for free. Everything is relevant on it. The whole thing, it's just good. It's just good. I mean, it's not you know, the most exciting thing. No, but, it's but good. it just does tons of stuff. Like, All right. And decks. All right. Uh, speaking of good and exciting, uh, Nightmare Shepherd. Uh, it is two black black for a 4-4 four, four enchantment creature, demon, uh, with flying. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. Jer? This card is really, really good. Yep. Uh, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with it, but it's going to be something, <laughs> and then probably a different <laughs> thing, and then probably another different thing, so... <laughs> This is really, like, this is kind of disgusting yeah, when it gets insane. going. Like, my brain immediately goes, Spellseeker. So many Spellseekers. Yep. Get Spellseeker. Palace but. Jailer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, let's move to uh, some nicer things than this nightmare. Uh, Timoret Calls the Dead. Timoret Calls His Mom. Uh, two and a black for a saga. You said uh, nicer? Yes. Um, <laughs> this saga has three chapters. The first two are exactly the same. You put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, you create a 2-2 black zombie. And then the third and final chapter is you gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. Alex? Maybe. Really? Um, I compare this to um, the there's, a, there's two enchantments that make zombies whenever you attack your opponent. Do you know the ones I'm talking about? Uh, Curse, Curse of the Shallow yeah, Graves. Curse of Shallow and, Graves and yeah. Curse of... I like how we went for different, different ones. ones. Yeah, um, and that one might be making a zombie every single turn. Mm. However, it does mill you mm. six overall, and then it gives you a little like life pump. So, I don't know. I, I have no idea how to assess sagas. They're weird. They're very weird, and like... This... So, I have, I have mixed feelings on this card as well, because it's not sexy. You, what? You, what? You, Have you seen the art? But no, hold on, hold on. You, you, yeah, you, way to body shame. You almost surge. want, you almost want like the third chapter to drain life instead of deal deal mm. damage or something. Like it, it just feels, it feels as though there's one little bit missing that makes this card. You're like, you know ah, what? It is. It's a scratch and win ticket where you're like ten thousand, ten thousand. <laughs> you get to play again free. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, oh, I won, but I don't care. And, I mean, if you evaluate it just from the fact that it is four power and four toughness for three mana and a bit of an upside, but it's spread slow. out. Slow. But it's so yeah, slow. slow. It's spread over so many turns. And that and that's why it's hard to look at because you're like, Grey Ogre. You're like, okay. Second Grey Ogre. You're like, okay. Gain some life and scry. You're like, not really relevant for an aggro deck, but I guess I'll take this free life and card selection. I, I think all these abilities are pretty relevant for zombies in particular. Because zombies yeah. isn't a traditional aggro deck. It's If anything, it's, it's more grindy, like a mid rangey, -range. like aristocrats deck. Yeah. Um, try it out. See for yourself. Uh, speaking of Timoret, or Timoret, Timoret, <laughs> chosen from death. Hello! Uh, black, black, <laughs> legendary enchantment creature, demigod. Uh, it's a two star. Uh, has toughness equal to your devotion to black. Uh, one in a black, exile up to two target cards from graveyards. You gain one life for each creature exiled this way. Alex? I think I like this card um, because as we mentioned earlier, like um, with the new mechanic of escape coming in, people are going to be utilizing their graveyards even more than they already are. Mm. So 
incidental graveyard hate might be at an all-time good. We've come a long way from Withered Wretch. Yeah, yes. like this is Withered Wretch only super. Yeah. It doesn't have the zombie subtype, but like that booty gets real big. And you can gain life. It's going to like balance you. This seems sort of like more on the control -y end of black cards. Like it's not particularly aggressive. Mm. Um, it's just going to be able to block until the end of time right. and keep you in the game. All right. So Speaking of blocking for the end of time and keeping you in the game, we got Woe Strider closing out the, our view. Yes, two and a black good. for a 3-2 horror. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 0-1 goat, sacrifice another creature, scry one. It has escape, so three black black, and exiling four other cards. You may cast this from your graveyard. And when Woe, Tr <laughs> when Woe Strider escapes, it escapes with two 1-1 one -one counters on it, coming back as a 5-4. Uh, Jer? Uh, <laughs> this is a bit of a weird card, <laughs> but I think it's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. It's just a lot of value wrapped into one card. You get a free yeah. goat. Yeah, you get a goat. You get a free sack well, no, outlet. This just keeps coming back. This card's... Yeah, it's also, it. it's also another free sack outlet at three mana, which is pretty reasonable. Like, pretty good. Anything... <sighs> it's not legendary, which... It's seemingly every other playable three mana stack yeah, outlet. We can't. They just stapled legendary to it. So yeah, we can't yeah. emphasize enough how much like no mana cost or like tap ability sack outlets are. Good. Yeah, value. They're just quite good. Yeah. Especially right. scry one like viscera seer. The just sack. Sometimes you're just like man, I just want to yeah. sack my board to scry. Yep. Kill the self, find a threat. Kill the self, oh, find, find a, a threat. threat. Well, and this one you get to you get to scry two at least. We'll scry one twice at least. That's a good. Because you get a goat to close on, I think. Because we did whoop. Uh, well, if we miss something, if you feel like we missed something, please uh, comment down below about any specific card. But now we are moving on to uh, one of our featured segments. It is powerful magic. <laughs> And we have Jer up to bat. Jer, what you got? Yeah. All right. So I I promised my opponent from this one that I would I would say it. I actually have two from the same opponent coming up soon. So my next one will be the next one. But this was at the most recent double up, uh, which is a little while while ago now, uh, December. Uh, I was in the two O bracket and I was playing Death and Taxes. Uh, I opened up my hand. I won the die roll. I had a pretty pretty good hand. Uh, it had a mana crypt, but most mana crypt hands, if you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna win this game, I was like, my hand's pretty good, but like I could, it was a mana crypt hand, but I could lose. Mm. So I, I played my planes. I put my mana crypt on the stack, and I knew my my opponent's known blue mage. I, uh, I, so I like was like, does this mana crypt resolve? And he kind of tanked a bit, and then he's like. I'll respond. And he just throws an island, and then he says, I'll cycle. And I'm like, are they cycling Street Wraith? Like, what's happening? Because I was on the play. They had no lands in play. And he throws an, a tapped island and hieroglyphic illumination into the graveyard. And I was like, uh... Well, and this is a competitive event. So I was like, uh... Judge? Uh, and Nelson comes over. <laughs> And my opponent just like starts laughing and shaking their head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I had no idea what was happening. And it turns out it was their third GRV, so I got a game loss for the most <laughs> powerfully confusing play I've ever encountered in my so entire got, life. So they got the game loss, not yeah. you. Sorry. Yeah, they got a game loss. What the But but I was just like like what's happening? Like they're like I'll respond because I was giving them the courtesy of like this is a force they of will. They could force a will it. Yeah, right? Right? Totally, yeah. Force of negation that's twice as likely sure. now. Like, totally reasonable. And I was, when they said they'd cycle, my Im brain immediately went to Street Wraith. They're a notable Blue Moon player, and they're they're known for putting really wacky cards, or wacky cards to me in their Blue Moon <laughs> list. Like, they were the first person to play, like, Noxious Revival and oh, okay. well, now stuff it's all like that. <laughs> now it's all coming together. But I was just so <laughs> baffled. They're like, I'll respond... I'll cycle. And then just they just like slid the island and hieroglyphic illumination into the graveyard in one swift motion. <laughs> and I was just like, 
It like took me like five seconds to just comprehend what happened. Like, what am I seeing? And I was right just now? like, <laughs> judge. <laughs> and like all I could do was laugh and yeah. Thanks. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be thinking about the complexities of that That's, play for okay. a while. I still am. Yeah. <laughs> and Why? We We've played each other like three times since. Why did they pitch an island? Well, that's no, they, how you pay they for put an, They put an <laughs> island into play at instant speed, tapped it to pay for the <laughs> whoa, cycle. Oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, all right. Whoa, okay. whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Like, no, no, no. Whoa. It was a really powerful, and, and like, they weren't trying to cheat. <laughs> like, that's even so better than the brain worked. Like, they had, they had lined up their turn one play as play island cycle hieroglyphic illumination. And they just like had and they were like, and they were like, and they were like, oh, this is bad. I should do this now. This is how their their brain worked. And they were like, I should do this now. Island hieroglyphic illumination. You just tunnel vision so hard that you just like, oh but, dear. Yeah. Just seeing it from the other side of the table, I was just like, pardon me? Or am you like, okay? All right. Uh, enough of that. I I don't want to black out <laughs> from hearing that anymore. Uh, so the next set review we're going to do will cover uh, red, green, multicolored land and colorless. Um, again, if you feel as though we missed anything from this one, please let us know. Of course, this was all brought to uh, in part by you through the Patreon, patreon.com slash loading ready run. Thank you for allowing us to hear such uh, brain breaking stories as that. And uh, a reminder about the uh, year end finals uh, on February 1st, the Saturday on twitch.tv slash loading ready run. Uh, I will also, I guess, be at New Jersey New next Jersey. week. New Jersey! I think I'll plug that. There'll be Canlander at New Jersey. Oh, boy. That'll be fun. Anything else coming up? Anything else? As well? No? Great. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, see you next set review. Bye. Have a good one.